G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam, and for today's video I'm going to show you how to use the Dart Designer tab in Contact Builder and walk you through how to create and set up your very own attribute group in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So to access our Dart Designer, we can navigate to Contact Builder by choosing our menu selector at the top, scrolling across to our Audience Builder and then Contact Builder. From inside Contact Builder, we're going to choose our Data Designer and we'll see our attribute groups. The attribute groups you can see on our contact wheel here are showing each of the groups and how they relate to our main contacts in Marketing Cloud. For today, we're going to go through and set up our very own attribute group using a data set which I've used in my previous AmScript exercises. And here is the data relationship that we're going to build today. Our cloud learners being our customers, having some data that relates to their ID onto cloud learner ID, which further relates onto our beams, roles and tags. Now this data relationship set was first used in my AmScript 03 exercises, my lookups and loops. I'll put a link to this exercise and the video that I used for it in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. In this link though, we're going to navigate to the data extensions folder and have a look at our CSV files. Here we have our beams, beam roles and tags, cloud learner and cloud learner beams. These of course being the same names as are used for our data sets here. You can see below how each data extension is set up, so you can see for yourself how to set these up. I've got these ones already built inside my marketing cloud, so once you pause the video and build them for yourself, we then take a look back into Contact Builder to build out that relationship in our attribute groups. So now in Contact Builder, let's go and create ourselves a brand new attribute group by choosing the Create Attribute Group button. Once we do this, we can choose a few things. First of all, the name for the group, I'm going to call this one AMP03 for our testing. I can of course also choose an icon. For this one I might choose the shopping cart and go create. Once this is created, it shows us an interface which allows us to connect those data extensions back onto our main contacts inside Marketing Cloud. So here is our screen. To start off with, we can choose to create a new data extension or link an existing one. And since we have these data extensions created already, let's choose to link our existing data extensions. The most important thing here is to realize that the contacts is where all of our data sits inside of Marketing Cloud. So you have to build up from contacts and create those relations for our data set. So the first one I'm going to link in is going to be our cloud learners, our main contacts. So I'll navigate in my data extensions through to my exercises to pick up those records. So let's have a look at my exercises and AmScript 03. And let's pick up of course our cloud learners, our customers. Now the customer ID is going to relate back to our contact key inside of our contacts data. It's going to be a one-to-one -one relationship, that is we're going to have unique customers and unique IDs in our customer cloud learners data extension, which of course relates back to our contact key. With that created, I can then go save and the relationship will then be saved. So what we can now see is that our contacts in Marketing Cloud will have a direct data relationship on contact key to the ID field in my cloud learners data extension. This tells Salesforce Marketing Cloud that whenever I have a customer contact key and it appears as the ID field in this data extension, it's going to be a relation on the contact. So I can now use this data in things like my journey builder as a filter on my contacts. I'm not done just yet, I've got more data to relate to this main data extension. Let's now build up the next one from my cloud learners, which is my cloud learner beams. So back on my contact builder attribute group, I can choose to create a new link here to add a relationship. I can press that button and it brings up a new window. So what's my next data extension to relate? Well, if I navigate once more back into my activities, into my exercises, and I'll find the next one up, which was my beams, my cloud learner beams. The relationship here, of course, is going to be the ID relates to the cloud learner ID. You can check that on my diagram here. It is in fact relating on ID to cloud learner ID. But the key thing here is it's not going to be a one-to-one -one relationship. A customer can of course learn multiple beams. So it's going to be a one-to-many, a one-to-star relationship. So back in my contact build, I have to make sure it says it's a one-to-many relationship. I can then go save. So now I have a second data extension related back into my diagram. My contacts relates to my learners, and the learners relate to those learner beams. We of course have a few more layers to go down. So let's make our next layer down, which is going to be connecting our beams to our products, our beam products. So back in our contact builder, let's make another relationship. This time we're going to choose our same data extension on our left hand side and 
plugging in to our beams. So again, back into my exercise number three, and we'll choose our beams. And for our beams, it's gonna be the beam ID relates to the beam ID. Now this time around, it's a different relationship. If we have a look again, our beams are our products. It's a unique product ID. One beam can be learned by multiple cloud learners. So it's a many to one relationship. So back on my diagram, this time I make sure it says many to one. With that set, I can then go save to create this next connection. And with our third data extension plugged in, we are most of the way there. So let's plug in our last two, which is relating back to our Beams products. Each Beam has a role assigned to it and a tag assigned to it. And it's a one to many on both of those relationships. So let's try those out. We'll again choose to make a new relationship. And then choosing to navigate through our data extensions, back on to our exercises, and picking up our AMScript 03. This time on our Beams, connecting in our Beam tags. Now this one's going to be our ID relates to ID and this time the relationship is going to be what? A unique beam can have multiple tags. So it's going to be a one to many and go save. So with our four data extensions created we have one more to go. This will be our beam roles. We have to connect it back to our beam data extension. So we we'll use this button again to make a relationship back on our beam data extension, bringing in our roles. So once again, navigating through our data extensions and picking up our roles data extension. Now, once again, it's going to be a one to many relationship. So indicate that using my dropdown, one to many and click save. So we now have all of our data plugged into our data attribute group. Starting with our contact, which relates to our cloud learners on ID. A cloud learner can have multiple courses, which relate back on ID. Each course relates directly back to its course product catalog on ID. And each course catalog does have tags and roles assigned to it to help the customers find those courses more easily. And that of course is a one to many on both relationships. So with all of our attribute group data done, Let's now go back to our data designer and check out the results. We now have 17 attributes plugged in to our AMScript 03 data attribute group. Now let's take a look at how this data looks in our contact builder contact filters within Journey Builder. So here is a really simple retargeting journey which I've made designed to retarget my cloud learners who have not looked at a particular cloud beam course yet. I use my data extension as an entry source picking up my cloud learners and finding all five records. Now my next step is gonna to be to use a decision split to split up the ones who have seen that course versus the ones who have not. If we go back into my Beams data extension, I found a course, the AI Cloud, which is a pretty cool looking course. So let's find customers who have not yet looked at that course. So I'll choose that as an ID, go back into my decision split. Now in our split here, we can usually use our journey data or our contact data. Lucky for us, we've got some brand new contact data to use. So if I expand my contact data, I can find my AMP03, my brand new attribute group. I can expand that and of course it's going to be looking up on the subscriber that's coming into the journey. So on the subscriber in the journey, find the cloud learner. In the cloud learner, it relates back to the cloud learner beams, the courses that learner has done. So for this learner, do you have a beam ID that is equal to 32? Now if you do have as a contact coming in, you're a cloud learner, who has a Beam ID 32, then you have seen that course. So back on my summary, I'm gonna say that path one is, has seen AI Beam. And if you've not seen the AI Beam, then you must be the remainder, the ones who have not. So I'll leave it as remainder. And as simple as that, I've now got an easy split using Contact Builder data. I can pick up my records who have not seen the Beam and send them a brand new retargeting email saying, hey, check out this really cool Beam. So as you can see, adding your customer data extensions to your contact builder using the attribute groups is a fantastic way to really empower your journey designs and workflows so that you to complete much more complex journey interactions for your customers. So I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of the contact builder today. If you have, then please let me know with a comment below and a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.